G'day crew, Todd from Toxic Garage Customs. Welcome back. Well, I'm outdoors. I'm actually standing on the brand new slab to my shed extension. You don't see much about that. We don't see anything about that in this particular video. But in future episodes, you'll see what's happening. I'm pretty excited about that. What you'll see behind me is the Datsun 1000. It's out in the open. Not because of the shed, because Sam pushed it out there because his GMC is in the garage. You also will see something about that in future episodes. But right now, in this episode, you'll see that we get right into it. We take the Datsun into the garage, we start having a look at the rust, and we start attacking it. And by the end of the episode, I'd love to say that we had it finished, but we haven't. There's still more, and we ran out of gas. What do you do? I guess we continue on later on. Anyway, nothing me gas bagging. I'll see you at the end. Enjoy me cutting that thing up. So I'm going to start attacking the rust. So this I believe is the major part of the rust. This is on the front driver's guard. There's rust there. There's rust up the top. There's a dent there. A more logical person might just replace the mudguard or the fender, whatever you want to call it. I'm not doing that. So what I am going to do, however, I'm going to jack the car up in a minute so that I don't have to be working right down at that height. And then I'm going to go through and dig out that bog, bondo, body filler, whatever you want to call it, and just see what's there. I might discover that this thing is just way too far gone, but it'll have to be a long way gone before I decide that, because it's only metal. Um, and then I will make some further decisions once I've dug that out and I'll probably make a template or something and then start making something out of some steel. So let's jack this car up. And this is the ugliness up close. Let's have a look from the back. Okay, so we can see the actual body, the um, torque box I guess it is, on the right hand side of the car. And you can see what appears to be rust on the back of the mudguard, that big chunk in the middle there, and then down the bottom. So I'll see if I can detach the bottom of the guard and maybe from the door just to swing it out a bit to get to it more easily. In the rest of this here, I have looked previously, it looked pretty dry in the rest of the car. I will go through more carefully. Lots of stuff to do, but concentrate on this. Inside the guard, so this is a mud flap brace. If I just undo this, then that will assist. I'm not sure about that bolt there and that one up there. I don't think they are anything. But then, under here, there is a bolt somewhere, just there. So we'll take that off. And I was looking inside the door with some other bolts. We can't really see much. I can't actually really see any other point that it's bolted on. In fact, there's a line between the mud guard and the door, the A pillar. So. I'm thinking it might just be this Phillips head screw up the top and the bolt down the bottom, then maybe it'll pull out. But what you can see is down the bottom here, this here, this is where it's rusted out. There's all soil collected in there. So um, it's no wonder it rusted out. Let's undo those things and see if that is what's going to help us pull the bottom of this guy out. The bolt underneath the mud guard when I go to turn it, it just seems to be spinning. So either there's a captured nut that is no longer captive or it's just rusted out or something else. So I'm coming to the inside and I'm pulling the carpet and I'm gonna throw all this stuff away anyway, but it's probably good that I'm working on this at the moment because this thing is saturated inside. Lately, we've either been having absolutely stinking hot weather or stinking hot humidity. And um, today it's really humid earlier it was raining look at this it's been that hot here that this sealer or whatever it is I presume this is new yeah that is that wasn't like that before 
I can only assume this sealer stuff has melted. It's bizarre. A whole glob of it. I noticed some on the carpet on the other side. Well, okay, well that's irrelevant. So, here, somewhere, underneath all this disgustingness, is a floor. And it looks pretty good from underneath, so that's a good thing, because it looks pretty terrible from the top. I don't know what that stuff is. I'll be pulling all this out, that's for sure. What I'm looking for is a bolt. Just here, or maybe it's in that hole. I'd say I'm going to be cutting the head of that bolt off with an angle grinder and tapping and screwing. But what I am going to be doing as part of this process, oh look a knife. What I am going to be doing as part of this process is getting rid of all this. Because that's just problems waiting to happen. Needs a good clean out in here. It's all part of the plan, but that's going to happen sooner rather than later. And I might move that knife so I don't accidentally slip my wrist or something. Angle grinder time. Cut that one bolt head off. I'll have to remember to tap that out later. And what you might see on the ground there is a bunch of stuff that fell out. And when I pull this guard out a bit further, I suspect a whole bunch more stuff's going to fall out. How about that? It's bolted on with the mud guard bracket, a mud flat bracket. One bolt there, one screw up there. And that's all that's holding the back of it on. Great for me. logical person might unbolt this guard and fix it off the car. Look how thin this metal is. It's a really thin gauge. Um, but yeah, I'm going to resist that because I really don't want it. But I do want to have a look in behind here to see if there's any damage in there. With a quick scrape and a poke. It doesn't look too bad. Torch. What have I done with the torch? Hang on, see where I put the torch? There it is. Stop looking. Okay, found it. Got it. Let's have a look. Let's get you in closer. I think you've got a torch. Can we use your torch? Here's your torch. Okay. What have we here? Yeah, it's all falling in my sock. That's just a weld. On a very quick inspection, oh, there is a little bolt there that is clearly rusted out. Looks like that's actually meant to be part of the mud guard and probably is accessed from inside the um, rocker panel or the sill panel. But that's okay. That actually looks pretty clean. It's just got dirt and crap built up. So this is obviously a thicker, more durable steel, while the mudguard is not. That's okay, that's the part we've got to fix. Let's do that. Just briefly, that's what's fallen out so far. That's the hole so far. A couple of bits of bog that came out. Let's face it, who hasn't done a body repair without sticking bog in it? So, um, it's not too bad, and I gave the back a bit of a clean up. It's fine. So it's got to repair this bit. I'm probably going to be kicking myself at the end that I didn't take this mudguard off, and you're going to be screaming at your TV or your phone saying, take the mudguard off. But the stubbornness in me is not doing that. I've done so far is just cleaned off some of the paint. I've barely touched the apparent metal because quite frankly there's not very much of it there because it's such a thin metal so I don't want to go eating into that 
Someone's been here before me, obviously, the body filler and everything. But all I'm trying to do is see the shape. So I've got this contour through here. All panels have got a bit of a, a crown in them, so it sort of curves one way and the other way. This lip through here looks pretty good. I haven't bothered grinding it back. I can actually tell that it's good metal from about here. So I'm not actually going to cut this corner off. Why make life harder for myself? The back has, it's just a folded edge. Oh, it's probably, actually it's just a folded edge where it goes into the sill. So it looks pretty straightforward if I get the shape right. So I'll probably reproduce that. And underneath, I won't bother taking you under there. There's just a little tab that goes back that bolts the mudguard on and just a very slight fold it's only about five five mil if that so you know, tiny um, so I think what I'm going to do is reproduce from here I might just sort of go across here somewhere and up there I've ground back a little bit further it's nothing worse than trying to weld into rusty steel there you can see it's carried through here so I'm just going to go out past that a little bit and I think yeah, what's that edge look like? That edge is rusty in part. Yeah, so it's rusty down the bottom here, but it's okay up the top. Yeah, I think it's going to be easier if I just reproduce this edge here. So I'll cut around there. So I'm going to have to put some curve in it. I'm going to have to fold it. I'm going to have to reproduce down the bottom here. And it does sort of kick in here on this one, but on the other side it doesn't do that. So I'd say when this was done here, it's just sort of changed shape. So some people like using cardboard templates, some people don't. I don't think it matters which way you do it, just as long as you get the result. I'm going to use a cardboard template in this case, in the first place. So I can work out how much steel to cut out, and then I'll go from there. All I did then was have a look at where I would like to do the work, roughly. It doesn't matter what shape it is, really. So I just drew this. It puts me all into clean metal. Well, that's what I believe, anyway. So then I just held a piece of cardboard over there and roughly marked where it was. It doesn't have to be exact because nothing is really exact. If I make the steel this size, that's how big the patch will be, regardless of exactly where the line was that I drew. And I just held that in place. And I've made a piece of cardboard that is pretty much the shape of the patch that I need. I pushed a crease in here because that will help me later on when I go to break this, put a bend in it. It's only very shallow, it's only from the internal bend to the external bend, maybe four or five mil. So that will be an interesting little bend to do, but I should be able to do that. And then I've put here, that actually says plus 10, and that's just, I want to put an extra 10 millimetres of metal on that part just above the line because that's where it folds around where it's got a return but down the bottom here 
I don't believe it's supposed to, just the way it fits into the seal there, I don't think it could work. And then I've put plus 10 down the bottom, mainly because I cut the cardboard a little bit short, and it'll give me an overlap. So I'll probably end up going more like plus 20 and plus 20 or 30 down the bottom because I can trim it off later. It's easier to trim it off than it is to weld it back on. So this being the case, I'll have to put a fold in it here, or break it, That'll be a butt weld, a butt weld, and a butt weld. And there'll be a fold down the bottom and obviously this body fold through here. And the whole thing will have a little bit of curvature this way and definitely has some curvature that way. So I'll cut out the piece of metal and then I'm just going to start forming it up to some shape. The first thing I think I'll do, I think, yeah, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is put this crease in it here. Let's cut the metal first. When I installed this industrial shelving here, I cut a section out of the back of it to fit the solar panel, whatever you want to call that there, um, in. And when I cut that out, I thought I'm going to use this piece of sheet metal as a rust repair on the Datsun. And that might seem like a strange thought process, but the reason being is this, I believe, is probably about the same thickness as the steel on that. I've got some 18 gauge, 20 gauge over there, but I think what would happen is that uh, I'd be welding thicker steel to thinner steel and be struggling. I'm just going to go with this, I think it's pretty similar. So I'm going to clean off this coating, I think it's paint, it could be powder coat, I'd say it's paint. I'll just clean that off and then that'll be the piece of steel I'm going to use. cleaned up enough of that for what I need, just using a um, um, flat disc, a worn out one, I think it's about 40 grit, trying not to get into the parent steel too much, parent metal too much. So as I said, plus 10, plus 10, I'm just giving it a bit more, I'll trim it off later. And then I'm simply going to... Come around here, because remember, it doesn't matter how exact I am with this, it's the fitment to the car that makes the difference. And this has only got a minor fold through it here, but if that was a deep fold, then obviously it would make the piece of steel even longer again. So this fitted into the shape when it was that size, and uh, now that it's flattened out, then it, you know, that's the size I made. So I'm just going to whip that out with a um, Just a very quick clean up there, so you can see the shape, I've cut it to the shape roughly of the template and I just went through and cleaned up the edges. I just did those because potentially that's the spots I'm going to be welding and the rest of it won't be, so let's face it, um, some paint on the back of that in the first place is not going to have any negative effects, so I'll leave it there. 
So the next thing I need to do with this is to get that break into it. So it sits out about there somewhere. So this bend through here. So I'll mark that out and then I'll um, maybe go over my little sheet metal bender. I've, trend, I've got the mark on the front there where I need that fold and it's got to fold away. So the top has got to fold away. So because of that, I've had to transfer the mark onto the back. And I'm going to be sure to really clean this Sharpie marker off before I get too far ahead later on as well, because it will always come through the paint. And in hindsight, something other than a Sharpie marker might have been a good idea, but I do this all the time. So I'm going to put it in the brake and we're going to brake it there. And it's only, well, we'll have a look. Probably the best way to describe the, the break is it's uh, or the bend is that it's not quite 90 degrees. So I'll do it at not quite 90 degrees, and then I'll take it over to the car and have a look at it. So the bend, the first bend that I've worked on here is actually just this little piece here. So this is the bottom of the panel, so it needs to have some curve put in it. And then this bend here, I'm trying to mimic this bend here, and then I need to bring it back up here again. So if I just hold that like that as best I can, I can see the angle is pretty close. So the angle that this is bent is pretty similar to that, but I need to put some curvature in here. So what I'm going to do is just very quickly mark that shape out on a piece of cardboard and then I'm going to go over to my little device that I have for making curves. So we'll just do that. That's pretty close to the curve that we need. So I'm just going to take this and just cut it out just something to reference to, it doesn't have to be exact because I can bring it back to the car. So if I have that, like that, that's about the curve that I need. So we're going to take this and we're going to put that curve, we're going to put that curve into this piece here. And this is something that I made some time ago. It's just some pieces of pipe on a stand that I made up and the pipe's welded together and it's just got a gap between it. It's got bits of dust and stuff in it. Just got a gap big enough between the pipes to be able to slide a piece of sheet metal in to just manually bend it. You can do this over your knee, you can use a sheet metal roller and all sorts of things, but this was scrap and it was cheap and easy. So I just need to find, like none of these are the same curvature. You could use a gas bottle or something as well, but I'm just going to control controlledly try and put some curve in it. Still a bit straight through this area. I'm not necessarily using the full radius of the pipe, I'm just using it as a leverage point and not to put a kink into it. Looking pretty close. If I do over bend it a little bit, that's not too bad because it gives a bit of pressure when I'm applying it to the car. Got a little bit of a crease in it, I would have preferred not to do. But we'll have a look. It's a difficult angle to film from, but 
what you're looking at is the, the mudguard front on. So what I want to try and show you here is the curvature and then this little lip here. So that's all I'm trying to create in the first place is to duplicate that curvature on the bottom and this lip. And now what I need to do is bend this piece of steel up with this and then it's got some curvature in it as well. So I need to very carefully go and just put a break or a bend in here, just that distance there, and bring it back up so that it then continues this curve, but with a step in it. Now because of where the, the bend is positioned, I'm unable to use my brake to do this second bend. So, and in hindsight, maybe I could have done it first and then still use the brake, but I'm not really sure about that. But anyway, I've just made up a basic brake out of two pieces of steel, angle iron in this case, just clamped into the vise. And I've, I drew a pencil line there and I've basically got a little step there. I just did it by eye, I didn't measure it, to try and fit in with that step that I need to put in that mud guard. So you can probably see a little bit of a shadow there, so that's the step. So what I need to do is get this whole piece, including that, and bend it back. Now what will happen is I'll take some of the bend out of the panel and I'll take some of the bend out of the corner in the process. So I've got to try and minimise how much bend I take out of it that I want to keep there when I create this new one. But it's going to be fighting me a bit. It's very thin steel, so everything's going to bend pretty easily. So I need to get this to come up and then I need to be able to get in behind it and tap it down. Now I don't really want to use a hammer because it'll dent it so I might try and get a length of steel a bar or a piece of timber or something to tap the back. Now we're going to find out together how well this is going to work. Just putting some flat bar in behind there to try and lever it. Now I'm going to use the flat bar and hit it to try and put that fold in there. Now it's not a super sharp fold in the body line, it's a bit rounded and this angle, it's got a little bit of a round to it, so hopefully it won't get too sharp. I don't want to over bend this, so I'm going to have a quick look at the car to see just how sharp the angle is. Like the first bend that I did, the angle is not quite 90 degrees. So as it is at the moment, that looks like it's not quite 90 degrees. Thank you for that, Rooster. So that's what we have. not quite 90 degrees so we can stand here and gaze at it all day long but we need to have a look to see what it looks like on the car. So all of a sudden, a chicken decided to walk into the picture. Okay, again, I apologise for the background noise with the fan, but it is really humid here. So I've got this fit up as best I can. I'm pretty happy with the angles. I think this could probably be, this return could probably be a half a millimetre deeper, but I don't think anyone will notice. So. 
I've got that clamped in place. It has got a little bit of um, springiness in the steel. Um, that clamp's also holding it out a bit. But once it's welded and put in place, I think it will actually do it good. It's actually pulled this corner at the front out a bit in the process. Now, remember, the guard's all still unbolted. And I've just got it so that the body line there is absolutely spot on. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to Clico it in place, and I'll show you those in a moment, uh, so that I know exactly where I can take it off, put it back on, take it off, put it back on, because I want to create those lips uh, and be able to return it to the same spot every time rather than just depending on pen lines or something like that. Now some people, you'll say, will just use metal screws, tech screws, and just screw it in place. Absolutely fine, no problem. I have a Clico tool, I have Clicos, I like using them, so I'm showing you that. Some people will use metal screws, absolutely works fine as well. So I'll show you the Clico tool and then I'll come back here and we will put it in place. Okay, so the tool is a Clico tool. This is the Clico tool. These are Clicos. Now I'll put the camera down and I'll show you. The Clico tool is simply like set pliers and the Clico goes in like this and here and then if you watch the pointy end it goes in and out and when it goes in, sorry when it goes out it becomes smaller and when it goes back it expands a bit. So what happens is you can join two pieces of metal together by drilling a hole slipping this through the hole, letting go of it, and it's a removable rivet. They use them when they build aeroplanes. They're not that expensive, but they're very handy. So let's put some Clicos in the mud guard so you can see that in action. So I've just drilled four holes there, put four Clicos in, and you can see I can take the clamps off and the sheet stays there. Now the winning thing about this is that I can take those Clicos off, take the panel off to do some further work on it, go and do some extra work on it then I can bring it back and just put it back in exactly the same spot. Now obviously the metal behind this will be cut out, so just to be certain, that rusty metal, that'll be cut out, be cut away. I'm not going over the top of this. So these holes will need to be welded up, but at the end of the day, they're four little holes. That are just a little bit of extra welding on top of the welding that I need to do anyway. But every time that lines back up, so now I can take this away and I can work out exactly where I need to fold this. And to do that, I can just pull the mud guard out and draw a line on the back and just follow the existing line there because it won't be a straight line. It could be a really easy error to make by just drawing a straight line. It will have a bit of a curve in it. Just about all lines on body panels have a curve. 
and I can do the same on the bottom here. It will be a straight line, I suspect, because the seal generally a straight line. So I'll transfer those marks on, then I can take it away and I can bend those those um, angles into it. Clicos. Okay, so I've taken the panel back off, got some lines drawn on there and so on. I understand what they mean, I only did them a second ago, so uh, I hopefully won't forget. But down the bottom, that says fold, I've got to fold it inwards towards the middle of the car, so away from the front. Now it's almost a 90 degree bend, so I'll do it like that, and I'll do that on my brake. And then up the top there, where it says fold, that's a 90 degree bend as well. That panel's got a little bit of curvature in it, so I may need to get it on the shrinker stretcher just to finish that off, but uh, we'll see. And then those two or three lines there, this one here is nothing, the first one. That one there, the one in the middle, that is actually the edge of the panel. And that, this part here is where I'm going to cut the steel, that wobbly one. That's where I'm going to cut the steel. And that part will be folded back. So this part here, the thin, thin bit in the middle, it'll end up folded behind to create strength in that panel. And again, because of the curvature, I'll probably need to um, put that on the stretcher shrinker as well. Let's uh, trim it up and we'll have a look at the next sequence. Unfortunately my camera went flat, the battery went flat part way through making this panel. But I've gone through and I've pretty much got it to fitment stage. So I've trimmed the bottom up, trimmed the side up, trimmed the other side up and I've folded those edges. And again the advantage of the Clicos, I've had this panel on and off uh, probably 10, 12 times. Easy. So what we have here is on this lip here, got that folded back there, so it's got a nice strong edge. And then the part at the top, I've got a break, it's a little bit wobbly unfortunately, but it'll be okay. And I did have to put on the stretcher shrinker just to keep the curvature in it, a little bit of a lump there. So it's still got all that curvature to it, and that sits back in place. <coughs> Excuse me, is right to go. <coughs> so I'm going to clico it in place and then I'm going to cut around it with the angle grinder carefully so as not to cut the brace that actually goes down the back here. Now I think it's okay, so I need to make sure that I don't cut through it. Of course, if I do, then I can just roll it back up, but I'd prefer not to. So we're going to cut, put the panel on, and I'm literally going to run the grinder around the side of the panel so that I'm cutting it to fit the panel. Okay, so I've cut here, here and here, and as you can see, because the guard was under a bit of pressure, that gap looks way bigger than what the angle grinder blade was. So it actually, when I pull it back into shape, it's just a tight one millimeter gap. Now I haven't cut right the way at the top here because I didn't want to cut the door, but I'm also going to remove it. Now, you can do a cut and butt technique with this where you cut a bit, weld a bit, cut a bit, weld a bit, and so on and then you remove the old piece from the back. The problem I have with that is that 
I have that brace behind there and I won't be able to get the rusted section out. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to leave that corner there for the moment, no particular reason. But I'm now losing my Clico points as well. So as soon as I take this out, I've got nothing to Clico this onto. So that's why I'm cutting it to exactly where I need it to be. But I'm just going to cut some of this stuff out now. I'll try and leave the Clico points. I'm just going to cut some of this out to try and expose that brace so that I can not go cutting everything out and then sort of get myself over a barrel. that I was talking about. This is a point that is on the, the um, frame of the car. Oh. This is stuck back over the bolt that I, got, that I, I cut out. Come on. I'll get that in a second. So what I'm trying not to do is damage this brace because it is the part that bolts back onto the mud guard. So if I just come in and spot weld my patch panel to it in a couple of spots, then it has the strength through there, bolts back on, and I've just got to weld it around here. And before I put this together, I'm going to clean all this up and I'll put some rust encapsulator or some type of paint in there, even if it's just primer. On the left is the new, on the right and in the tray is the old. Now we've got copper twos going over. Let's just have a quick look. So I've just spent uh, 20 minutes, I guess, just cleaning up the area and prepping it to be welded. So I've tried not to take any of the parent metal away, but hopefully you can see there around the edge here, nice and clean and shiny. And there's luckily one still, one Clico hole still in the brace. There is a couple of little spots of rust in that brace. And there is a couple of little spots of rust just in the body, just behind the brace there. I will probably just grind a little bit more out of there to get clean metal and I'll throw some weld in there. Now behind here, we now have an area that's nice and clean. I'll give it a clean down with some prep sole or something like that. Just something to give it a clean. And then we will go through and put something to preserve it to stop it rusting anymore. 
So apologies for the light, the light in this garage is absolutely terrible. So you can see behind there, still a bit dirty, but no rust, dirt's gone. And we'll give it a wipe down, put some primer, some sort of rust encapsulator, and um, we're good to go. And then we can put this, and then we can put this on there. We had a spot welder to the brace a couple of times, as I said. Butt welded around here slowly and surely, hopefully not to distort the panel too much. And a little bit of um, body filler over that, paint and all that sort of stuff, and it'll be done. But in the first place, we've got to clean it up, put some sort of protectant on the inside. That's next. I can't remember exactly where I was at last time we were here. I think I might have been prepping it. So what I've got here is I've got these panel alignment clips here. I'll show you the back in a moment, but really what happens is they clamp it front and back and they've got a little piece that goes through the middle that keeps your one mil space, which is what my angle grinder blade is. I had one Clico hole left, so I've used that. So this panel is all aligned and ready to go. In the actual body section behind, there was a couple of spots of rust, so I didn't bother filming this, but I ground them out with a die grinder and then I welded a little plate over the top and then you can see a good lathering of um, seam sealer, sealer. So I ground the holes out I ground the holes out and then I just welded the plate straight over the top so I didn't butt weld it but put the seam sealer there and I put a bit of seam sealer on some seams that were there as well so that's all good that's ready just for some paint later on this is the back of those little clips. That's what they look like. So you can see there's a little block that comes through and it clamps the two pieces of steel on the same plane. Why are you refocusing? And then there's the little centre bit that comes through. Now, it's a bit hard for me to hold this panel out and show that at the same time, but I'll try. So, where are we? And that part there, the little square bit, that goes from side to side, and then the little plate bit, it goes through the gap. I'll show you them once I take them off, and then you might see a bit more clearly. And if you see here, the part in the middle is the part that's sticking through. So you can sort of see it going through the hole there. So it just clamps them in place. So I've got this prepped, I'm just going to very slowly go around, put some tacks, about every 25 or 30 mil in between those blocks, and then I'm going to cool it off with some air, and come back, and I'll do some more, and then eventually we'll go right the way around. I'm trying to keep the heat down. You will have seen this a thousand times if you watched any videos on, on doing panel repairs. Got to keep the heat right down, otherwise you'll end up with buckle and warpage, so we don't want that. Well, time for me to have a bite to eat. Um, 
I have some 0.6 wire. I'm not sure what that is in the other gauge, how you measure it. Um, but what I have in the gun at the moment is 0.8. And the reason being is I couldn't find any 0.6 tips, uh, which has made it really hard for me. I've had to put a bit more heat into here. I've created distortion. I've blown some holes. It's really not cooperating. It'll come up okay, but if I had 0.6, I'm sure it would have been a lot better. But it is what it is. Uh, let's face it, the car's not a show car. So I'm going to have a bite to eat. Then I'll come back, grind this off, and we'll see if I need to fill any more holes. Okay, okay. I give up. I'm taking the mud guard off. It's got to be easier. Also, probably got to paint this car, I've decided. So I need to pull it apart anyway. Hey, look. An acorn. A hazelnut, whatever it is. So, pulling the grill out, pulling the headlight out, undo the three self-tappers most probably that hold the mudguard on and then my life will be easier. You win, I lose. Nothing new in this scenario. Taking the bolts out, uh, they're tight, spraying Penetron on them to lift them up. This one here just snaps straight off. Got that one out, got that one out. This one, the head's stripped out. So before I go destroying it completely, I've got a groove in it with the angle grinder so that I can fit a straight blade on it and hopefully that'll work and if not I'll just cut the head off then I have to drill that one and this one down here out to uh, retap them. Snap straight off. That's okay. I'll grind the rest of it off and tap it. I didn't really have any great desire to pull this thing apart into a thousand pieces because I'm trying to keep it simple. But the reality is it's going to be simpler for me to uh, finish the rust repairs in the guard and uh, move along than what it would be to muck around with it being bolted on. Like everything, as I said, snapped a couple of screws. You go forward, you go back at the same time. This is not a concourse resto, it's not a resto at all, I'm just trying to fix the rust and get the thing running and registered. But it is what it is. So there we go, just a couple of little things that I like to do. When I take nuts and bolts out, I like to put them back in the place where they came from. So down here, there's the bolts that bolted, bolted it on. And I actually haven't put these ones back in here yet, they're on the air cleaner. But I will put the top ones in. The ones that were holding the headlight in, same thing. That way I'm not chasing my tail. So all the ones for the grill, all back in here. Not looking for things, not mixing and matching. They are where they are. So um, the reason I took the guard off was to be able to get to the inside of it. And the reason I uh, want to get to the inside is that I've gone through and I've uh, patched this up. I can now get to it to grind it better. There's still a bit more welding to do. And there's some heat distortion in here. It's not surprising, I was trying to avoid it, but it happened. But I'll be able to um, just planish this out with a hammer as well. And I've done a part up the top of the guard, and there's just a few spots. There's a little dent on the nose, and a few other little spots of rust. But now I'll be able to get to it from the back, so that I can go through, and I can grind those welds up. I'll be able to get a hammer and dolly in there, same up the top there where I did that so uh, it was handy to leave the guard on the car to do that because I was able to duplicate the exact shape and the fitment to the, the car and um, yeah as I said I'll be able to get into this area up here more easily to bang the dents out that are there so that's all okay it's coming along all right keep going oh and um, down the bottom here this bracket that was here, I did say I was going to do it and I did. I've drilled some holes in it, there's a couple of little spots of rust there um, which I have ground out and I'll just weld up. But I'll now be able to clamp this all together and spot weld this brace back onto the guard and I carefully made sure that I didn't cut that brace off when I was cutting the section off because this is where it bolts up to the underside of the car so I can go through and clean all that up. Let's continue.
So what do you reckon? I'm pretty happy about the way it's coming up. I think we're making really good progress on the Datsun. So I'll follow up with more videos about this in the future. But the next video you can see will be a different one. And then the next one after that. We're mixing it up. We're mixing, matching. We've got the Datsun. We've got the International. We've got the GMC. And we might even have a bit of other stuff going on. But here's a sneak peek of the beginning of my shed. That's enough. You'll have to work out what's going on and tune in to see the progress on that. See you on the next one. Like, comment, share and subscribe. And